All right, no diagram provided in number one, so we're going to have to do our own here. I got an airport, a factory, and a shopping center. Those are three vertices on my right triangle, so let's get a right triangle down. Get a right triangle. I have one there. Okay, so one vertice is going to be factory, one airport, one shopping center. I don't know where they go yet, but let's keep reading. Airport and the factory, six miles apart. The distance from the shopping center, their distances from the shopping center are 3.6 and 4.8. I should automatically know where the six goes. Where should the six go? Hypotenuse, it's the longest side. All right, so I know my six is going to go here. And that's what, the distance from the airport to the factory? So airport, factory, that must make the right angle the shopping center. And let's see, what's the 3.6? That's the distance from the shopping, if it says respectively, so 3.6, which one came first here? Airport, so shopping center to airport, 3.6. And it looks like shopping center to factory is going to be 4.8. All right, we're ready for the right triangle, and that's all set. A service road will be constructed from the shopping center to the highway that connects the airport and factory. All right, so a service road. Here's my service road from the shopping center to the highway that connects those two. What's the shortest possible length for that service road? All right. You don't know this yet, but, and I'll have a diagram for you tomorrow. I won't have you make up your own. But the shortest possible length from a point to a line is the, anybody remember? Perpendicular distance. Okay, that's the shortest length from a point to a line. So I'm trying to tell you guys that this is a, they're perpendicular. So I get a diagram like this tomorrow. What type of triangle is the original one? Right triangle. What's the, another name for my service road here? Altitude, and it's drawn to the what of the right triangle? What do I call AF of my big right triangle here? Hypotenuse. What's that automatically signal for me? Altitude drawn to the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Hills and SAS, automatically hills and SAS. Just got, I have to figure out which one I need to use. Well, we're looking for the service road, right? And you guys just told me what's another name for the service road. An altitude. So I probably should be using what here if I'm trying to find the altitude? Here you go, eight. We'll go, but I wanted that as a response, though. Well, if I use hills, hills doesn't have altitude in it. So I want to use SAS, right? Everyone agrees? You're telling me find the altitude. The only one that involves altitude is the SAS proportion. But yeah, there's a problem. And Nick started trying to just started saying this. What's the problem with using SAS right now? Uh, you're not filling in anything here or here, are you? Because remember where the segments were, here and here, and I know nothing about them. We all in agreement. So we'll get back to this, but not right now. We all right. What were you guys missing from this? Segments. Is there anything else that I've shown that involves a segment? Not SAS, but hills. Do you guys know the hypotenuse length? Do you know a leg length? Oh, looks like we can solve for a segment then. So then we can go back and use SAS. Everyone see this? Because, hey, tomorrow you may do a problem where it's just not one and done. You may have to use hills to get to SAS or SAS to get to hills. So help me fill it in for hills. Hypotenuse length. Let's roll. 12, hypotenuse length. 6, leg. You got your choice. 3.6, fine. You could have used 4.8. I didn't care. What about other leg? Or is this, what do we know about the legs and hills? They're the same. 
And I'll call that segment we're finding Y because I already called the altitude X. So we're trying to find that segment right here that I'm calling Y. All right, do your thing. Here we go. And what is the length of that segment that we're finding? Here we go. 10, length of that segment. 2. Point. I didn't get 2.6. I have 2. Point. What, do we do? what are we doing here with the proportion? How do we? 3.6 times 3.6, and then you divide it by 6. We got 2.6. There we go. 2.16. Yep, 2.16. So there's 2.16. But hey, if you're going to use SAS, don't you need both segments? Because the S's represent two different segments. All right, uh, I really don't feel like doing hills again. Can anybody help me find the other segment a little quicker than using hills, Will? Go ahead, everyone. Six, the entire hypotenuse minus the segment, 2.16. And the other segment will be 3.84. Now, everyone, we have enough information to find the service road. Go right ahead. And there are rounding directions at the top of the page. Just pay attention to those. Length of that service road, nearest hundredth, 16. That's nearest tenth. Hundredth would be two after the decimal, remember. Oh, hundredth. Hundredth, yep. 2.88. And I heard it over here already. Your problem has units, so does your answer. Okay, so we're miles. We are right there. So don't be surprised tomorrow. Hey, I know I need to use SAS, but I can't right now, OK? Because you're trying to solve for A, but you don't have the S's. OK, find them somehow. Find them some other way. Also, hey, also, when I got that 3.84, is there another way I could have found the service road length other than going to SAS? Pythag. Keep that in your back. I have no idea what happened there. Keep that in your back pocket, all right? Nope. Where's your right angle? Here's the right angle. So 4.8 would have been the hypotenuse. Okay. Other questions? All right. I want to do one more with you that involves a special right triangle. That's the number five with the hexagons. Take a look at number five with the hexagons, please. I'm going to blow this beast up. All right. Two reasons why I want to do this one with you. One is because it doesn't involve a special right triangle, which we'll find out in a second. And the second reason I want to do this with you is because it uses the word snuggly. I don't, had anybody seen that in a math problem before? Not me. Snuggly. All right. Right inside. All right. So anyway, it's shaped like a regular hexagon. A uh, little vocab. Regular again. All sides are the same here in that hexagon. All sides, same length. Rectangular box. So what do I know about the angles in the rectangular box? They're all right angles. So in my rectangle, I have all right angles. OK. If the side length of the hexagon is 3, so that means if one side's 3 and it's regular, 
They're all three. Yep. What are the dimensions? And I don't know if you're familiar with that term. That means find the length and width. Okay, find how long this side is and that side. Ready to go to work. I need some more degrees here because Pythag isn't going to cut it here. Maybe it's a 45, 45, maybe it's a 30, 60, but you're not going to throw in random ones and hope. Okay, we're going to prove this out. Regular hexagon. Let's go back to that unit. Anybody remember all the exterior angles add up to 360, right? All the exterior angles add up to 360. How many of them are there if this is a hexagon? Six. So what is each exterior angle? 60. Oh, oh. All right, we're moving now. All I need to do, find an exterior angle. So this one's 60. Anybody? That would mean this one is 30. Boom. Everyone see now we're working with the 30, 60. All right, let's keep working. Let's get our chart going. What side, don't yell anything out, I'm gonna ask somebody. What side do you know in that 30, 60, 90 triangle? What side do I know? Hey, 20, what side do I know? A side across from 90 is three. Can you fill out the rest on your own? Going backwards now, going to the left. First find the side across from 30, then go to the 60. All right, what do you have for me here? 16. So, 1.5 is across from the 30, and how about across from the 60, Maggie? Good job, so I'll fill that in my diagram. So across from the 30, this is 1.5, and across from the 60, 1.5 radical three. All right, so all I need now is this piece and this piece, right? Which I think we could figure out, but let's keep talking. Anybody know what this angle right here is going to be? It's an exterior angle, so it's also going to be 60. There's the 30. What did we say was across from the 30? 1.5, all right, so that takes care of this side. All right, let's go down here. What should this angle be right here? This angle? 30. 30, yep. Because this angle down here is your exterior, which is 60. And what did we say was across from the 60? 1.5. All right, let's find the dimensions now. Let's start with this side. How long is this side? Whether you call it the length or width, I don't know. How long is that side up there? Uh, 15, how long is that side? It's gonna be six, explain where you got six, because people just see 1.5 and 1.5. And you got the side length of three from the hexagon. So 1.5 plus three plus 1.5, yep, that's gonna be six for one dimension by, what's the other one going to be, which is this one right here. Be careful when you add those suckers up. That side, 13. That side, calm it down. 10. 1.5 radical 3 plus 1. Okay. You got it. There it is. 6 by 3 radical 3. 6 by 3 radical 3. You're the one screaming at your group, weren't you? Last problem. Inches. Whew, tough ones. Trying to get you ready for tomorrow. Anything else you want to ask? Okay, here's how the next, uh, the rest of class is going to go. You are going to finish one through seven. 
get on your Chromebook or your phone, check the answers. The answers are a part of tonight's homework answers. Once you get all those good, once you get all those correct and you feel all right, go on to the book work for tonight. Okay, let's get it started. Call me over if you're unsure about anything. <laughs>